question comes from Rory Holscher in Galena, Illinois. Uh, this question is about Berkshire's investments and climate change. On one hand, Berkshire's utilities have large commitments to wind and solar power. Berkshire also has an investment in BYD, an innovative transportation company that may be comparable in some ways to Tesla. On the other hand, Burlington Northern hauls a lot of coal. You point out in the 2013 annual report that its profits could shrink if coal burning was curtailed. And then there is the reinsurance business. How do these and other Berkshire investments align with your understanding of the risks and opportunities posed by climate change? How should we think about this as investors? Well, I think that you've stated the facts on a whole bunch of businesses. And it, I mean, if you own a railroad that's carrying a lot of coal, uh, it'll, it'll carry a lot of coal for a long period, a very long period, but it'll probably carry less at some point. I don't think, I, I think that's very likely too. But I get all these questions from people and something they want me to fill out lots of forms and everything about how it'll affect our insurance business. It doesn't, it just doesn't operate in that in that time period. I mean, we, we, we are not making, when Ajit and I talk about what we'll charge for catastrophe insurance, you know, whether it's hurricanes in Florida or whether it's earthquakes in New Zealand or whatever it may be, the year-to-year -year change in probabilities on that are, are, at least in our view, extremely low. I mean, it doesn't come close to being anything that affects your prices in any material way in any given year. And, you know, we will continue to develop alternative sources of, of, of energy. Uh, we'll continue to use coal in our coal generation plants until the utility commissions under which we operate tell us that we should do something different. We, we have no choice about that. We incidentally have no, I mean, we're, we're happy to carry the coal, but I, beyond that, we are a common carrier. I mean, we, 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 we might love to turn away chlorine or ammonia or something like that because uh, of the dangers in carrying it, and we can't, we can't get compensated adequately for that. But we are a common carrier, so we, uh, we, we by law, we're required to, to carry uh, the freight that, that is, is offered to us. Uh, so I, I don't think in making an investment decision on Berkshire Hathaway, or most companies, virtually all of the companies I can think of, that climate change should be a factor in the uh, decision-making process. Charlie? Yeah, I, I think a lot of the people who think they know how climate change is gonna change weather patterns and hurricanes are over-climbing. Uh, we're sort of agnostic. It isn't that there isn't some global warming, because there plainly is, but the people who think they know exactly what's going to happen and how many people are going to die from tropical diseases and so forth are mostly talking through their hats. I think well, there's a class of people who like the idea they've got a calamity to worry about. Yeah. And well, but, and when you say, I mean, just in terms of being an economic variable and making a decision. No, we're, we're not thinking, yeah. how can we structure our whole investment program to take into account what we think we know about climate change? But I think we're very well located long term, no matter what happens. Uh, I think that transmission lines and more, we're going to have to produce a lot more electricity directly from the sun or indirectly through things like wind. And uh, we're beautifully positioned. It's uh, just like Geico made a lot of money when the internet came along that they didn't really plan on. Uh, I think we'll make a lot of money as more and more electricity is, is produced more directly from the sun. So I think we're in a very good shape, but I don't think we deserve any great credit for it. We just stumbled into it. Okay, Becky, quick. Uh, this question is from Manolo Salceda, and I'll preface it by saying he says that he is a true admirer of Buffett and what he stands for, so please don't confuse my bluntness and straightforwardness with a lack of admiration or empathy with this amazing person and his master creation. 
with that disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> but. Uh, his question is, you've stated several times in the past that if management, you, wasn't capable of delivering a better return than the index, then management wasn't doing the job. Then you said that the yardstick, sh yardstick should be any five-year period. You've just missed your five-year period comparison. How come you didn't tackle the issue in your annual shareholder letter? Are you changing the yardstick, and what's next? No, we're not, we're not changing the yardstick, but I would point out that uh, we said, actually, in the, in the 2012 report, and it's, it's in the upper half of the first page, we pointed out how we do worse in, in very strong years and better in poor years. And I, I said then, if the market continues to advance in 2013, our streak of five-year wins will end. I didn't say it might end I, you know, or could end or anything. It, it was obvious that if you have, if you have f five strong years in a row, uh, we, will, we, will not, we will not beat the S&P. And that will be true in the future uh, for sure. And of course, last year was, I think there were two years in the last 40 or so that the market was up more than it was last year. So despite uh, the things mentioned about President Obama, the stock market <laughs> seems to have done quite well. Uh, the, we, will, we will underperform in, in very strong up years. We'll, we'll probably more or less match in moderate up years. We'll do better than average in even years or down years. And I have said, and I'll continue to say, and it's been true, that over any cycle, we will, I think we will overperform, but that's, there's no guarantee on that. Uh, uh, but it was, it was clearly said, like I say, on the first page of the 2012 report, that if the market went up, we would have a five-year streak of, uh, uh, of underperformance. And uh, uh, that's exactly what happened. Charlie? Well, we should remember that Warren's standard talks about net worth of Berkshire increasing after full corporate taxes at roughly 35 percent. And the indexes aren't paying any taxes. And so Warren has set a ridiculously tough standard and has so far met it over a long period of time. In the last couple of years, the net worth of Berkshire after full provision for income income taxes went up, what, 60? Something like that, yeah. 60 billion yeah, dollars. Yeah, pre-tax, probably 90 billion. Yeah, Nine, yeah. Mm -hmm. and so if this is failure, I want more of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And you and Char Charlie, do you ever fight or argue and any lessons over the years for how you manage your partnership of two. Thank you. Yeah. Charlie and I have never had an argument. We met in 19, in, 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 uh, uh, when I was 29, he was 35. We're a little older now. And in, the, uh, in those years, 55 years, we've disagreed uh, on a lot of things. Uh, and it's, it, it's just never led, it, and never will uh, lead to an argument. Uh, uh, we argue with other people, but it, it just, it hasn't occurred. I, I called Charlie on the Coca-Cola vote, for, you know, and I said what the proxy statement said and everything. And said, what do you think? And we thought alike, you know, that sometimes we don't think alike and, and we never go away and the least bit mad if we don't. Yeah, or... But most of the time we think alike. That's one of the problems. If one of us misses it, the other is likely to, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would say that, well, there's no question. I've, if you look at the really bad mistakes we've made, I've made them. Uh, the, uh, uh, I'm probably a little more inclined toward action than Charlie. Would you say that's fair, Charlie? Or? Well, you once called me the abominable no man. <laughs> I am Bill Melby from Northfield, Minnesota. 
At the 2009 annual meeting, Mr. Buffett, you said that if you were required to invest your total net worth in one company, that that company would be Wells Fargo. So in 2014, I asked the same company, or the same question. If you were required to invest your total net worth in one company, what would that be? When the question was asked in 2009, did you exclude Berkshire? Because I think I would have answered Berkshire, but, <laughs> but I, uh, I, I wouldn't quarrel with Wells Fargo's a marketable security outside of Berkshire at that time. Well, I guess he's checking his notes on <laughs> the, uh, well. Uh, the, qu the question is, other than Berkshire, oh, other than Berkshire what okay. would you invest in today? Yeah, well, it's a great question, but it's not going to get an answer. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, do you want to answer? No, no, I think you've given exactly the right answer. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but we've disappointed others when they've asked that question.